Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing the best products of 2023. I went through every single thing that I tried this year and I narrowed it down to my top 20 favorites. So I'm not necessarily going to have something in every category because there were some categories where I didn't necessarily find a new favorite this year. And I'm also not going to be including things that have been favorites for years. I feel like those are a lot of the things that you've heard me talk about over and over again. And I really just wanted this to be a recap of 2023 and what were the products that I discovered this year that ended up being favorites. So let's kick off with some base products that I fell in love with this year. I think this first one was one of the first products that I purchased in 2023. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Foundation. This is the first full coverage matte foundation that I have liked in years, maybe even ever. I don't know if I've ever had a favorite full coverage foundation until this one. Normally I just stay away from full coverage products because I tend to just find them to look too heavy and cakey on my skin, but this somehow has incredibly high coverage and a satin matte finish but really leaning more matte and has really really good staying power while also somehow looking beautiful on the skin. I have some texture fine lines to my skin and this is so flattering. I'm wearing it today mixed with the next product that I'm going to talk about but this is my go-to foundation if I'm filming, if I'm going to be in photos, if I have a special event or if I just have a lot of things on my face that I want to cover up like if I'm just having a lot of breakouts. This perfects my skin unlike anything else in my collection. I also will note this does have a strong fragrance. It has that same scent as the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula, that very tropical scent. I smell it as I'm applying it, but I don't find that it lingers throughout the day. Yeah, I'm so glad I discovered this this year. Another thing I discovered this year that I love pairing with any foundation is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So this is a glow booster. There's a lot of products like this out on the market now, but this is definitely intended to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I actually had one of those and used it up and I really enjoyed it, but I bought this to replace it because I heard it was a really good alternative to that one. My favorite way to use this is as a foundation mixer. I'm wearing this, like I said, mixed with the Physicians Formula Foundation today, and I pretty much combined an equal amount of each product on the back of my hand and mixed it together and applied it to my face. Other times I will just put this on the high points of my face and have this foundation on the other parts of my face or any areas where I want more coverage. Other times if I've already applied a regular foundation, I feel like it's looking a little bit dull or dry. Like I just want to add a little bit of radiance to my skin. I'll just tap a little bit of this over it with a sponge and it really does add like almost a glowy filter to the skin. It's also luminous without really emphasizing texture. It doesn't really have any noticeable glitter particles to it. And the other thing about this that actually makes me like this more than the Charlotte Tilbury one is that this one to me seems to have more coverage than the, than the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So sometimes I actually use this as a foundation just on its own and it looks beautiful that way too. Lately I haven't been as into like a really glowy foundation, but whenever I am in the mood for that, this gives a gorgeous finish to my face and it gives light coverage. I would, I would even say it has more coverage than a lot of skin tints do, but maybe not not quite as much as like a full-on foundation either. And it can serve so many different purposes in your routine as well. It's one of those things that before I had something like this, I didn't really think I would use something like this very often. But now that I have it, I use it all the time. This next product I also discovered at the very beginning of this year, and I'm almost done with it now. <laughs> it is the Sigma Color Correcting Duo in the shade Light to Medium. I wasn't sure if I was going to include this in my best of the year, but if I'm looking at all the products I tried this year, this would have to be probably my most frequently used product out of everything. There was a stretch of time there where I was using this every single day. Now that I'm almost done with it, I've been kind of savoring it because this is a pretty expensive product and it comes with so much less product than most color correctors do and it's really expensive. It retails for $30 and for how little product you get, I don't think it's worth it at full price. But right now it's actually on sale for $24 on Sigma's website and then on Beauty Bay it's on sale for $22 and I do think that's a more reasonable price. As much as I would like to find a more affordable dupe for this, I have never tried a color corrector that comes close to this one unfortunately. I just love this and for me it's a combination of the texture and the shade. I find that a lot of color correctors for some reason feel the need to be like so emollient and tacky and like shiny and I don't really want that on my under eyes. I like this because it is creamy and it does feel a little bit hydrating but it's very lightweight and it doesn't give you like a super shiny finish on your under eye and it's thin enough that I can layer it with a concealer and it doesn't feel like I have a ton of product caked on there and a little bit goes a long way. It's a very pigmented and 
concentrated formula so you could definitely use this on its own as well i i like to layer it with a concealer because i feel like that's when i get just like the most perfected under eye possible but i just wish they would give you more product for the amount you're paying this next product is kind of the opposite of the sigma color corrector because it is really affordable and you get a ton of products so this is one of the best bang for your buck products the makeup revolution translucent baking powder this surprised me this really surprised me because before nothing could touch the elf halo glow loose powder this i still love as well but i like the revolution baking powder just as much i will pretty much just use these interchangeably now and this one is a much better cost per ounce than the elf one because you get 1.12 ounces of powder or 32 grams and for comparison with the elf powder you get 0.24 ounces or 6.8 grams so you get less than a fourth of the amount that you get in the Revolution one. Now, the downside to this powder is, as you can see, the packaging, it's not the most practical for actual day-to-day -day use because the cap is super small. It does have a sifter at the top, so you could use just this cap if you wanted to, but you'd only be able to fit really small brushes in here. But I just decanted some of this into an empty e.l.f. loose powder container. That would be my recommendation is only buy this if you have a container to put it in because <laughs> otherwise it's kind of a hassle to use. But this is just as good a loose powder as the e.l.f. Halo Glow. I wouldn't say it has the same glow to it that the e.l.f. one does, but I love this, especially if you like baking your under eyes or if you just like applying a lot of powder to your under eyes so that you can really mattify the area and make sure that everything is set into place. This is great because you can really pile it on if you want to. Like, I mean, obviously there is a limit to that, like within reason, you can you can pile this on. Sometimes I feel like if I've applied one layer of powder and it's not quite enough, I like to go in with a second layer. And when I do that with this, it doesn't make my under eyes look more crepey or dry. It doesn't give them that super tight feeling. I don't usually like to actually bake my under eyes, but if you do, I would imagine this would be a great powder for that because of that. And it also never causes my makeup to oxidize. You guys, I think I've done it. I think I finally found my favorite bronzer of all time. I don't know if anything could ever replace this at this point. And I bought it just earlier this year. And this is the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer in the shade In the Sun. It is the lightest shade it comes in. I think I have decided I do like this even better than the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in Fair. The formulas are very similar, I would say. They both have a really smooth, velvety, very easy to blend formula. But this shade is a little bit more rosy than the Charlotte Tilbury one, a little bit less orange. Not that the Charlotte Tilbury one is super orange, but it does have a warmer like orangey yellow undertone and this one is a bit more like a rosy warm undertone and it warms up my complexion but in the most natural way. It really just works so well with my skin tone and the formula is so smooth and somehow creamy <laughs> even though it's a powder. It's like a powder product that applies almost like a cream in just the way that it melts into my skin. I just cannot I just cannot get enough of this bronzer. I think I'm getting close to hitting pan on it as well. My favorite blush that I tried this year, also at the opposite end of the price spectrum. I like that we're going, you know, back and forth from high end to drugstore. This is the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. I think I like this even better than the Milani Baked Blush formula. I, I mean, I love that one too, but this has such a soft and smooth feel to it. And I usually expect baked products to be a little bit dry feeling, like just when you touch them. I feel like I'm touching this so much. But this is honestly just as smooth and creamy feeling as the Fenty bronzer. Like it has a very similar smooth feel. And when I touch it, it doesn't make a sound like I'm like rubbing my hand on a brick or something, which I do feel like like the Milani baked blushes, they have a little bit of brick vibes, you know, which I don't necessarily mind because you know, what matters is the way it applies and the way it looks. But all I'm saying is like, this is just a very luxurious formula in a very affordable product. This is what I'm wearing today and I'm not wearing any highlighter today. This is really like a blush lighter, which I feel like has been a pretty trendy product of the year, just blush lighters as a whole. This gives just a lovely subtle glow to the cheeks. Enough glow that I definitely feel like I can go without highlighter, but it's also not so glowy that it looks metallic on my skin. It doesn't look like I put pink highlighter on my cheeks. Next up, I had to give a quick shout out to the Milani eyeshadow primer. <laughs> this I repurchased this year. So I did have this years and years ago. I loved it, but then I just had other eyeshadow primers I was using. So I never got around to repurchasing it until this year. And this year I tried some eyeshadow primers that I did not like that. I, I shared those in my like products I regret buying this year. I should have just gone back to this one 
in the first place. Like I shouldn't have even bothered with those other ones. I saw that it's now in like a purple tube and I'm sad that I got one of the old silver tubes because I would have loved the purple one. But anyway, a little bit goes a very long way and I really appreciate that this actually sets on your eye. So I like to give this, it actually says to allow it to set for 30 seconds after you apply it. And if you do just wait like really 15 to 30 seconds, it dries down to like a semi powder finish so it still has just a little bit of tackiness to it but it really smooths out so it's not going to cause your matte shadows to skip on your eyelids which is a problem i was having a lot with other eyeshadow primers that otherwise worked really well but they didn't set down to that perfect finish where everything just blends so easily on top that's really what i love about this one i never get any creasing with this like it just it it's a workhorse i love that it's just a simple squeeze tube i don't like when they put a doe foot applicator inside a squeeze tube like no one needs that this is just so much easier to use it's so much easier to get out once you get towards the end and this tube will probably last me two years this would make a great stocking stuffer as well i mean any of these things would honestly but if you are getting someone like an eyeshadow palette for christmas toss one of these in their stocking this is the newest product that i'm including in this video normally i don't include products that i just discovered within the last month but i made an exception for this one because i have been using it every single day since i tried it and it has already reached favorite status and it's the ardell brow glue instant lamination lift this is what i have in my brows today and this gives me the look that i have been wanting in my brows for so long i even like it better than the nyx thicket stick it brow gel which i think was in last year's 2022 favorites of the year this has replaced it it's a different type of product because the nyx thicket stick it was a tinted brow gel that had fibers to it but it also was very sticky so it did like glue my brows down this is just a clear brow glue and they are not joking with this either like this really does glue your brows into place and keep them there the entire day i really like that because i have kind of long brow hairs that don't really lay straight on their own like the individual hairs if you were to like pluck one of them out they have kind of like a wave to them <laughs> they're not just straight hairs which is really annoying but this tames them and it gives me that lift and that shape that i want i feel like because it just like presses my brow hairs into place it makes it look like i have thicker brows than i actually do and so what i'll do is i apply this first thing like i'll go in with a primer if i'm wearing one on my face and then i'll apply this before foundation because um, it is kind of like a wet glue and it will lift up your foundation if you apply it over foundation. And then later on, I will fill in my brows with the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. I have been so, so happy with that routine. It's all I've been using in my brows for the past few weeks. Oh, and the key with this is to apply it and it actually does come with a little tool that has a little brush on one end, but a flat paddle shape on the other. And so you want to use this to press the hairs down after you've applied this. You press them down with this and that's what really locks them into place. If you like that laminated brow look, this is it. So for eyeshadow palettes, I'm going to be doing a separate video where I rank every eyeshadow palette that I tried this year. It's a lot and I had a lot of favorites, but I did decide to pick two that I felt like really stood out to me that they, they felt like the most 2023 palettes of 2023, you know, like these are the palettes that I used a ton and that I was just so impressed with. The first one came from a brand that was also new to me this year. This is the Alter Ego Midsummer Palette. I tried several of their palettes this year. This one would have to be my favorite. So this one you can clearly see is inspired by the Anastasia Nouveau Palette, which I haven't tried, but I feel no need to try it now, honestly, because this feels like ABH quality to me. I really do not detect a difference between this and the ABH palettes that I do have, but especially this summer, I was using this palette nonstop. I love the mix of earthy olive tones in here with your like warm golden terracotta shades. I think that's such a fun mix, and I also love the pop of lavender here. I definitely dipped into like these middle shades the most. Like, I love these two mattes up here the beige and then this warm terracotta shade is perfect. I love it because it's warm, but it's not like just a straight up orange shade either. My favorite shimmer in here is Festival. It's like this duochrome bronzy green shade. It reminds me of an old ColourPop single called Tea Garden. Do they still sell that? I don't know, but it reminds me of that shade and that is gorgeous with those warm mattes. But then I also love the olive tones in here, the taupes. It just makes me so happy, honestly. <laughs> like I just, the only thing I wish is that this deep brown shade were matte instead of this satin color because it ends up just looking kind of like a 
blackish color, but I'm guessing they went with a satin finish because that's what's in the ABH Nouveau palette, so I can't really fault them for that. I do now have an affiliate code with Alter Ego Sarah Rose. I think it's 10% off. My other just tippy top favorite palette of the year, it had to be this one. This is the Nomad Cosmetics Ghost Town USA palette. This was their like Halloween palette launch, but I truly think that this palette works for any time of year. I was actually fortunate enough to try all of Nomad's palette releases this year, and I liked all of them, but I did find that their formula varies a little bit from palette to palette. Like the Verona palette that came out earlier this year, the shimmers in that palette are way more like hard pressed in the pan than these. And don't get me wrong, I like the Verona shimmers too, but not nearly as much as these. Like I, I like what they did with these and I hope they continue this shimmer formula with future palettes because these are stunning. So this is the palette I'm wearing on my eyes today. Today I'm wearing like these shades over here. So I have on this light taupe shade in my crease and then I deepened up just the upper lash line in the outer corner with Bandit Queen, the medium brown. And then on my lid, I have the shade Rhyolite Nevada. That shadow has that wet look that people talk about. Like it almost looks glossy on your eyes, but it's just that it's like a foiled sparkly shade. Today I have it just by itself on my lid, but I also think that makes a great topper as well if you just want to add like a sparkly top coat to any other shadow in here. Gorgeous. And then on my lower lash line, I used this light blue. Skinner's Saloon, and then a little bit of Quicksilver just in the center of my lower lash line, and that's the whole look. There is not a single dud shade in this palette. Every shade, like what you see in the pan, is what you get on your eyes, and not only that, like the mattes are so consistent in here, like you don't have to fuss with them, they don't get skippy, they don't get weird in the crease, and the shimmers in here are like a squishy powder. They're super foiled, sparkly, really, really special shades. So the quality really could not be better. And the other thing that makes this a favorite for me is the versatility. You can do so much with this. There's a lot of color in here, but it's a lot of muted colors. So they're not just like super bright pops of color necessarily. I feel like they work really well alongside the neutrals in here. Um, and they're kind of earthy, especially these greens. Like they still look like very natural colors. I feel like it makes it really easy to dabble in color if you aren't used to wearing a whole lot of color to your eyeshadow looks. And also, so many of the shades in here are really unique. Like, the greens, especially these two matte greens, are different from any other greens in my collection. I love this, like, dusty denim blue. Nomad would also have to be one of my favorite brand discoveries of 2023. Yeah, I was so, so impressed with this palette. I Really hope they create more with this formula because it is just like, I think, I feel like they've perfected their formula now. I do also have an affiliate code with Nomad. It's also Sarah Rose. And just so you know, just because I have an affiliate code with these brands, it doesn't influence whether or not I talk about them. I would be talking about these even if I didn't have an affiliate code. But if you're shopping on either of these brand sites, feel free to use those codes and get some money off. A couple of single shadows I discovered this year. First one, I had to include the Hard Candy Eye Def Eyeshadow Stick in Stoned. I used this so much this year. This is very similar to one of last year's favorites, the e.l.f. No Budge Eyeshadow Sticks. I find the formula very, very similar. I just love this color for a really natural one and done look. This also happens to double really well as a contour stick for me, as well as a brow pomade. Like I've used this in my brows. It's a very natural color on me. And this does dry down and stay in place for me for about eight hours, I would say. If I'm going to be outside or sweating or anything, I, I will go ahead and apply an eyeshadow primer underneath. It's very blendable and I really like that it doesn't set down too quickly. So you have some time to work with it and blend it out. It's not like the Merit cream eyeshadows that like dry down almost immediately and you're like, whoa, I wasn't done blending that. <laughs> like, no, this very user-friendly, really enjoy it. This year I also rediscovered ColourPop Super Shock shadows. I had some ColourPop Super Shock shadows years ago and I liked them, but the shades were never anything that ended up being like a staple in my routine. But this year I wanted to find a couple more like neutral topper sort of shades from the Super Shock line. And I finally tried Ritz, which is like a cult classic from this line. And I am so glad I did because this has definitely become a staple in my routine. This is another product that I just keep in my everyday makeup drawer for whenever I need it for a topper. And this along with the Hard Candy Stoned Eyeshadow, beautiful, beautiful combo. I have a short on my channel where I applied them. So the special thing about Ritz is the silver shimmer in here. So you can see it has like a warm tan sort of 
sheer base like it's a pretty translucent base but the silver sparkle gives it almost like a glossy look especially layered over a matte taupe like this it kind of gives you that almost glossy lid look without you actually having to put gloss on your lids and the sparkle that this has looks so high end love 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 this i really am i'm so tempted to get more super shock shades but the thing about super shock shadows is they do dry out so I'm trying to be mindful of that and not collect a bunch of them. Right now, I only have this one and a little quirky. I also really like a little quirky, and I would say that one is it like if you like Ritz, but you want something that has a, a more saturated base, go with a little quirky. It has like a bronzy brown base, and that one wears well as like a standalone shadow. So does this, but it, it's a bit lighter basically. That's it for eyeshadow. I did have one mascara favorite this year, and this is the one I'm wearing right now. And I have actually determined, I think I like this more than last year's favorite mascara, which was the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. And I think this is a little bit cheaper as well. This is the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal Volumizing Mascara. This is that mascara that it doesn't have a twist off lid. You just press it and the wand comes out. I don't usually love this type of brush, but I really like this mascara for how nicely it builds on itself. So if you go in with just one coat on your lashes, it gives you a really pretty lengthened, fluttery look. But then if you go in with a second layer, it builds really nicely on itself, so it doesn't get super clumpy, but it will start to give you more of a dramatic, volumized look. And then if you go in with a third coat, that's when you get like false lash level volume. The other nice thing about this is that I really don't get any transfer with it. I had never heard of this mascara. I don't think I've heard about any Revolution mascaras before, but I was really impressed. In the lip category, I have three favorites, a gloss, an oil, and a lipstick. So I've been a fan of the BK Beauty Luxe lipsticks since they launched a couple years ago, but this year they came out with a few new shades, including the shade Grace. And this is just my perfect nude shade. This is it. It's really close to the natural color of my lips. And as you know, I haven't really been in much of a lipstick phase this year. Like I really have been more into tinted balms, lip glosses, lip oils, and just more comfortable lip products. But this is a lipstick that I am actually willing to wear and I really enjoy wearing it honestly because it doesn't feel like a lipstick. It's really creamy. It honestly just feels like a lip balm, but it has a lipstick level of pigment. I took this on the trip to Vegas with me. I actually wore this to the holiday party itself. This is the kind of lipstick that you're going to want to reapply every few hours, especially if you're eating or drinking, but so easy to reapply. You hardly even need a mirror. But I remember at the start of the year, I was like, kind of had in the back of my mind, like I wanted to find my perfect nude lipstick. And I think this is the one. My favorite lip gloss of the year, I just realized I've used like half of this, but this is the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. One of the best lip glosses I've ever tried. And the reason for that is because it it does what it says. It, it plumps, it smooths in the lines, it makes your lips look really smooth. The thing that really sets this apart from other glosses is the fact that this has staying power, which is not something that I have ever said about a lip gloss in my life, but this is a gloss with some thickness to it. It is a little bit sticky, but in my opinion, like you you need to have some level of stickiness for a gloss to stay on your lips for a long period of time. This is the kind of lip gloss that will even like you will still have some shine left on your lips after eating a meal. Now, of course, if you don't like a thick, sticky gloss, then definitely stay far away from this. But I have to say for a thick, sticky gloss, this is really impressive because I don't find that it gets stringy on me. And it, when you take out the applicator, <laughs> It looks like it would be terribly stringy on your lips, but when I just go in with like one applicator's worth of this on my lips, I really don't have any stringy or gloopiness. So I don't know what they did, but there is some kind of magic in here. And this one, the Juicy Watermelon, it smells like watermelon. And I think every shade is named after like a food or scent and they're all scented differently, which I think is cool. Like, I think that makes it fun. To me, Lawless Lip Products are like the grown up version of Lip Smackers. Like they have all these fun scents, but they're really luxurious feeling and you don't feel like, it doesn't feel like a little kid product at all. My lip oil favorite. I did not expect to ever have a favorite lip oil. In fact, up until this year, up until this product, I will say, I didn't believe in lip oils because it seemed like most lip oils were just lip glosses with a different name. But this product changed my mind. This is the Ciate London Bronze Glow Shimmering Lip Oil. So in my opinion, a good lip oil is non-sticky. So it 
feels a little bit different than a gloss, but it still has some really good shine to it, and it should actually last on the lips. A lot of lip oils don't really hang around on the lips for very long, but I want something that's actually going to last and feel like it is giving my lips some good nourishment while I'm wearing it. And this is one of the few lip oils I found that actually fits that description. I love this. Now this is mostly a clear lip oil. It does have a little bit of a bronze shimmer to it, but it looks mostly clear on the lips and you don't really, like the shimmer is pretty undetectable, but this just feels so nice. It really does feel like a cross between a makeup product and a lip treatment. I don't always love lip products that are in a squeeze tube like this because a lot of times the tip is super big and it's just hard to get a precise application with it, but this has a pretty small tip. It really is like the perfect size for my lips. It has a nice light coconutty scent, gives a really nice shine that does last on the lips, and even after the shine wears away, you still feel like you have some moisture there. So I love this. Like this has lived in my purse for the better part of this year, I would say. So those are all the makeup favorites of the year. I do have some more favorites that are kind of makeup adjacent. The first one is a lash serum and I feel like I've hardly talked about this on my channel, but I'm almost done with this tube and I really do feel like this works. This is the Ordinary Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum. I've been using this since April. Before this, I was using the Kosas Lash and Brow Serum and I like this one a lot better. The Kosas one would give me like these flakes in my lashes, which I didn't like. This one doesn't do that. It has a very thin, like oily serum consistency and a nice brush tip. So I will just brush it across the lash line. And then lately I have started putting it in my brows as well, just to see. And I definitely feel like my brows have been filling in faster than they normally do. And the hairs have been growing in faster. I've even gotten kind of annoyed with some of my lashes because they've gotten so long, especially like I have some in the outer and inner corner that are like so long and they kind of like stick out weird, but I'm like, at least I have all of these lashes now. <laughs> I can't complain. Obviously, it wouldn't be a Sarah Rose Favorites video if I didn't include some sunscreens. This was the year that I finally, finally tried Korean sunscreens, and I found so many favorites, but I had to mention my top two. You already know these two, especially if you watched my huge sunscreen ranking video where I ranked every single sunscreen that I've ever tried. These are my top two, so I just wanted to give them a quick shout in this video because I did discover these this year, and since trying these, I don't know that I will ever go back to western sunscreens. I might if I need something water resistant because there aren't, I don't think, are there any water resistant Korean sunscreens? Let me know because I have not found any. First up, the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Hyaluseca Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50. It's lightweight, gel cream texture, sinks in immediately, great underneath makeup. It almost has like a priming effect under makeup. Like it just smooths out the skin, plumps up the skin a little bit, no fragrance, really nice pump, super affordable. And of course my number one, my absolute favorite. This one is unopened. I have some other sunscreens I need to use up. This is the Ionique Centella Calming Daily Sunscreen. A little bit more moisturizing than the Skin 1004, although they both are moisturizing. This one feels a little bit richer without feeling heavy or greasy. It's also really soothing on sensitive skin, which is so nice because a lot of times if your skin's really irritated it's like the last thing you want to do is put sunscreen on top this i actually feel like if my skin is irritated this calms it down and soothes it love both of these i honestly recommend them both the last favorite i wanted to mention kind of a wild card favorite but it is this ring right here which i am wearing in pretty much all of my videos this is the aura ring i got this actually nathan got this for me earlier this year i've been wearing it all year so this is a smart ring and it's not really i wouldn't describe it as a fitness tracker more so a wellness tracker. It does track fitness, but it also tracks your sleep, your recovery. They also recently added a stress tracking feature, which is honestly my favorite, I think. I think it's super cool. So um, throughout the day, it measures your stress levels and it gives you this graph. Like here's yesterday, it says I had a normal day in terms of stress. I was in a stressed state for a total of an hour and 15 minutes, and I was in a restored state for two hours. So for me, I guess that's pretty typical and it'll show you like the actual graph of your stress levels which I think is so cool because having it laid out visually I can actually pinpoint what it was that stressed me out what's the cause of stress or what helps me recover from stress it's really cool it does also track your activity levels your steps your um, fitness you can log workouts in here the only workouts that it will actually track in real time though are walking running and cycling you can log other workouts but you have to do it after the fact so i find like for me if i'm doing yoga it doesn't really seem to recognize that i am doing 
any sort of physical activity even though i know i definitely am like i will log yoga and it will just say like that i was inactive the whole time but i'm like no i was definitely working pretty hard there you can read reviews as well but most reviews also say it's not really the best fitness tracker and it's not really the main purpose of it but it does do a really good job with the sleep and also your recovery every day it will give you a readiness score based on all these different factors like how well you slept the night before have you given your body enough time to recover from like a really intense workout or a lot of stress um, or if you've just been like running yourself ragged it'll it'll tell you today my readiness score was 90 which is really really good um but then you know some days like if i only got like four hours of sleep the night before or something i'll have a much lower readiness score so i know to take it easier that day it also has a period predictor and it will tell you what phase of your cycle you're in based on your body temperature i love mine i hardly ever take it off except to charge it you um, you can shower with it they have a bunch of different colors they're all made of titanium the metal for some reason like the gold painted one is like 200 dollars more than just the plain silver which i find kind of audacious because it's just painted gold it's not even it's not even gold plated or anything like there's no real gold in there it's the same exact material but anyway so i have the heritage design which is the one that has like the flat side sort of like a signet ring but then they also have the horizon which is just a plain circle and i would definitely recommend getting the sizing kit before you buy before you decide on a size because um i didn't do that and i did have to exchange it for a different size and the exchange process by the way was really easy really fast you do get one free exchange the only other thing you do have to pay six dollars a month for the app so there is that additional monthly cost on top of it honestly i feel like it's worth it because the app has a ton of really cool information like i feel like i've only scratched the surface of what i can get out of this app they have like guided meditations on here and they're always updating it and adding more features so i think it's worth the six dollars a month but you know there is that additional cost on top of it but anyway i think it's a really cool piece of technology and i would recommend it if you're on the hunt for like a last minute gift for somebody i don't think you can go wrong for some reason i thought oh only 20 products this won't take long and wow I've been filming for so many hours now. Whew. Okay, we made it till the end. Those were the top 20 products that I tried in 2023. I hope this video was helpful. This was really just a roundup of the best things I discovered this year. As always, everything I talked about will be listed and linked in the description box below, along with any discount codes that I may have for these products. And if you do make a purchase through any of my links, I will earn a commission, which helps to support my channel. So thank you so much if you do. But otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.